Hey everyone, welcome back to Geet Builds. I am Geet, creator and founder of both Minecraft and disappearing from YouTube for five months. So today, I'm going to be transforming this White Cliff Bay into a huge, sprawling city. It's an idea that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, and I've got a ton of cool ideas that have been worked into the city to make it really unique. So like I usually do, I made the train of the map and world painter so I can have complete creative control of the build. I get the rough shape of the map made, and then go back through and gradually raise the train bit by bit to get the layered cliffs sitting how I want so that I can eventually build multiple levels in the city. When it comes time to choose the materials for the cliffs to be, I had a couple thoughts in mind. One thing I'm always worried about when I know I'm going to be using a lot of stone type blocks is that it's going to blend into the surrounding terrain, and everything becomes grey and hard to see. So to avoid that, I decided to go with a mix of diorite and clay for the cliffs, which make them really bright and unique, and really makes it easy to tell the difference between the buildings and cliffs later on. Everything that I build in today's video took a little over 90 hours, and it's only the first part of a three-part build, with this video focusing on the cliffside communities and the main districts inside the inner city. Part 2 is going to be focused on the sea, so I'll build the docks, the ships, all the buildings on the two peninsulas, and a sea fort and lighthouse that are both going to be on smaller islands right outside the bay. Part 3 will be a castle at the very top of the cliffs, looking out over everything and it'll be visible from all over the city. This is by far my most ambitious build already before I've even started on the second and third parts of the city, and I have absolutely no idea how many hours the entire project will take. As I was scripting out this video, and got really tired of seeing the word city in every sentence, I decided that this place needs a name. I used a fantasy city name generator, and after going through a few amazing ones like Liver and Fripginia, I decided to go with Keysol. So to make building on the cliffs of Keysol easier, the very first thing I knew I needed to do was create the road network on the cliffs so I would know exactly how much room I had to build on, and making the roads first gives me a nice, big, flat surface to work. For the most part, I want the lower cliffs to feel more residential, and a little more chaotic than the upper cliffs. In Keysalt, the higher you go up the cliffs and the closer you get to the castle, the richer the buildings get, but on the lower cliff, the buildings stack on top of each other a bit more and feel like they weren't so much planned as they were added on as Keysalt grew. To keep the cliff communities feeling unified, all of the buildings have red roofs. Throughout other parts of the city, I use a few different roof colors, but I only use these red roofs up on the cliffs. I didn't want to use just one roof color throughout Keysalt since it's so easy for everything to start running together. For the same reason, none of the wall colors in the city are used on the roofs either, so there aren't any roofs that use spruce, oak, or acacia planks. I settled on a couple different wall colors as well, and use those throughout pretty much the entirety of the city. In the past, I've made half timber style cities using mostly white walls, but I go with stripped oak, stripped acacia, and a few quartz buildings mixed in with other buildings made mostly of stone, so that every building stands out from its neighbors. The upper cliffs use a good bit more stone in the walls than the lower cliffs, and have a slightly different style. Three of the buildings up here are pseudo-baroque, and are inspired by real-life buildings that I recreated in Minecraft. The buildings up here have different roof shapes as well, with some having really flat slopes, and others having really sharp peaks. They might be manors for the richest people in the city, not quite royalty but close to it, or might be Keysaw government buildings like a tax collector's office. I created a circle tower design connected by a wall with an arched gate to be the gatehouse to what will eventually become the castle. There's an entrance on both sides of the upper cliffs, and it feels like if the city were ever attacked, the Keysaw guards could easily defend these last gates from anything. You may have noticed that I've built a couple bell tower designs throughout the two levels, and then copy and pasted them a few times. There's five bell towers up on the cliffs, so I thought it might be nice to name this community the Bell Cliffs. Not super original, but it gets the job done. The final touch on the bell cliffs is going back through and adding details. I add a fountain, a few trees, merchant stalls, two different wagon designs, and a couple hand carts, and add flowers along the railings to make the cliffs feel bright with life. The bell cliffs turned out just how I imagined, which is great because you'll be able to see them from all over Keysaw. We're moving down from the cliffs and starting the first section on the ground level of the city. This area is the main city square, so I want it to be big and cover a large area. But because the ground slopes down from the cliffs to the ocean, I had to go throughout and level out the ground I'd be building on. I built the outline of the walls first so I'd have a good idea of what building heights needed to be. The most important building in this area is the city hall, so I started working on that first. The city hall is also inspired by a real life building, and since it's more of a gothic style it really stands out from everything around it. It ends up being so big that I have to move it from the back of the square to the front by the ocean, which I think ends up working better because you can see it directly from all around the bay. Going along the rest of the square are more residential looking townhouses. You can already see the different roof colors that I'll be working with throughout the rest of the ground level of Keysaw. The dark roof is a mix of different blackstone blocks, netherite blocks, and coal blocks. The greenish teal roof is dark prismarine, warped planks, and stripped warped wood. The two colors contrast really well, and I try my best to alternate them between buildings. Between the different colored walls and roofs, Keysaw ends up being extremely colorful, but in a way that feels realistic. 
Despite having tons of different colors going around, using darker wood as trim on the walls and dark oak as trim for all the roofs keeps the city connected while still having a ton of unique buildings. I decided to build the outlines of all the buildings in the square first before going back and adding details like windows and balconies. I just didn't really know which parts of the buildings would be visible when everything in the square was built, and didn't want to spend a bunch of time detailing walls that would never be seen. To break up the square a little bit, I include this open, airy building that doesn't really have any walls above the stone base. Since it's not really a residential building, it needed to have a reason for existing, so I create a clock tower rising up out of it to balance out against the bell tower that shoots out from the other side of the town square. I struggled a little bit with the color scheme at first, since the clock tower is another real life building I'm recreating, but settled with granite as an accent to the rest of the stone. I went through a couple different clock designs trying to get the circular shape right while still having room to place the buttons around, and ended up going with a double layered circle pattern which I think works pretty well. With only one side of the town square left to build, I wanted to have a counterbalance to the city hall. I knew the building had to be obviously different from everything around it, so I go with a temple inspired by the Pantheon. I do a lot of planning up front on the size of the different sections and add details first as I go up. To match the town square, I add spikes to the roof so it ends up sort of being a gothic styled pantheon. It's a lot different than the real life building, but it fits Keysaw really well. With the surrounding buildings done, I started etching out the different levels of the town square. Personally, I just didn't really like the idea of the whole square being on a slope. I just didn't really think that was realistic. So I sectioned it into two different areas, with the upper section being rounded out and connected to the lower with ramps running along the sides. There's a ton of area in the center still, so I decided to add a statue fitting Keysaw's theme. As a seaside city connected to the rest of the world only through the ocean, Keysaw would definitely be a place obsessed with the sea. So I built a majestic seahorse out of prismarine and set it on a pedestal, and add flowing floor designs running throughout the square to mimic waves in the ocean. The finishing touches on the square are fountains, benches, and flower boxes. With everything built, I finally go around and complete the buildings with windows and balconies. I give every building a balcony so that the people living there can enjoy both the view of the square as well as the great views they have of the bell cliffs. Somewhere around this point, I passed the 30 hour mark and felt like I was making pretty good progress. But after having spent around 30 hours building mostly residential buildings, I was ready to move on and build something a little more intense. Since Keysaw has so much of the city built high above the ground level, I could see one huge problem developing. Anytime you needed to get goods or materials from the ground where they're shipped in, to the top of the cliffs where the castle would be, everything would have to be carried up a horrible path of steep, twisting stairs. Keysaw would need an easier way of getting things moved from the bottom to the top. The answer would be a huge lift system, powered by an aqueduct moving water from a mountaintop spring and falling over two water wheels built into the structure. The waterfall would empty into a canal dug into the ground from the aqueduct all the way to the ocean. The canal would allow small cargo ships to sail in from the bay directly to the lift and load their goods onto a platform that could be raised from the ground all the way to the top of the cliffs. This all made sense in my head, but as soon as I made the canal, I knew there was a problem. Since the ground near the ocean is so much lower than the cliffs, the canal had a huge drop off from the land into the water near the cliffs. To fix this, I built a waterlocked system near the ocean that would allow ships to be raised from the ocean level to the water level of the canal. For the aqueduct and lift system itself, I started with an outline of where each level of the aqueduct would be, and then built the cranes of the lift. Each crane has a wheel, and has an inner lift system and another longer section that reaches out far over the edge so that the platform that would be raised and lowered would have a chain connected to each corner. The cranes are built mostly from stone, since they would have to be strong enough to lift an immense weight over and over again. I get started on the front of the aqueduct where the water wheels will be. I cut out a path for the water to run down beneath the cranes, and then build the arches where the water wheels will sit. For some reason, the recording mod I used glitched really badly around this point, and didn't record building the arches, and also doesn't realize that I've gotten rid of the sections inside the aqueduct where the water wheels will be, but I'll show what those actually look like in a few seconds. I added stone buttresses on each side of the aqueduct to support the towering stone structure, I went around and decorated the edges with a repeating stone chain design. The wheels are about 15 blocks across, and I placed them in the aqueduct staggered on each side so that the water from above would be able to fall directly onto each wheel. Originally, I wanted the wheels to be more inside the structure, but the water covered them too much and you couldn't really see them from the outside, so I moved them out a bit and add lanterns around so they're well lit. You can also see that I've created the platform and have it in mid-air as if it's being raised to the top full of materials. I finished the top of this section and built a path connecting it to the top of the bell cliffs. With the lower section of the aqueduct done, I move up to the next section and copy some of the designs onto it as well. Now that the recording mod is working correctly, you can see what the water wheel areas actually look like. I really like how you can see the water moving through the wheels and spilling out into the canal below. With the majority of the aqueduct done, I replaced some of the stone bricks on top with planks so that the structure isn't quite so grey and dense, and added a little dark oak line running around the waterway. There's also stone slats going over the water to prevent any trees or large objects from falling into the flow. 
The highest section of the aqueduct is basically the same as the one below it, but I extended it further into the mountain so it looks like the water is running from well within the mountain range. Not only does the aqueduct and lift system look pretty cool on its own, but from a distance it does a really good job of standing out and cutting key salt into distinct sections. Back on the ground, I built the resting dock where the platform will be lowered onto, and then a staging area in front of it where the goods and materials can be placed while they're waiting to be loaded onto the platform. To get supplies off of ships that are docking here, I make a crane that can hoist stuff up and lower it onto the platform. I'm not sure why, but the recording mod glitches again and shows blocks that I haven't even built yet, but eventually that orange blob will be a small cargo boat. I copy the crane and make some adjustments so that it has an entirely different angle, which makes them seem like they're in motion and being used. I finish the boat, and with most of the left side of the canal already completed, I go back through, add some trees and other tiny details like a retaining wall for a grassy area. I add a drawbridge so that people can cross the canal but ships can still get through when they need to. Since the area already has a sort of dock and shipping theme, I decided that a warehouse would fit in well and find some cool concept art to recreate in Minecraft. The building is wide and tall and has a large stone base and a stone tower rising out of the top. I really like the different roof lines on this building and added a few awnings outside the warehouse where barrels and other things can be left outside. I copy the warehouse, make a few adjustments and paste it sideways farther down the canal on the right side. Since the area is already more of a working district, I add a back alley behind the warehouse with some seedy taverns that dock workers and sailors can go to. So if you made it this far, it's probably a pretty good time for me to plug the usual stuff. So please like the video if you haven't already, it makes YouTube show the video to a lot more people and lets me know that other people besides me are enjoying what I'm making and helps me keep motivated to finish huge projects like these. I thought about uploading the map as it is so far to Planet Minecraft for download, but I just normally like uploading maps that aren't complete, so I decided against it. But if you do want me to post the map for download earlier than when it's totally done, then let me know in the comments and I'll add that link in the next video where I build the docks and ships. Also, there's a Discord server where I post updates on projects as I go along, and it's way easier to connect with you all than on YouTube, so I'll post the link to join that server in the description as well. Getting back to Keysaw, I want another open town square area right off the canal path. Similar to the first town square, I make the outline first, which becomes the stone walls when everything is done. Since I don't want this area to look quite as prestigious as the main city square, I keep the buildings a bit lower, but I still want there to be a main fixture of the square. I liked the dome on the temple, so I do a similar building design over here with the prismarine roof color instead, and go back through when the main walls and roofs are done to add windows and doors. I decided to make a second statue, but this one needed to be smaller to fit in with the surrounding buildings. To keep it ocean themed, I went with a fish and put it on a pedestal as well. When I was thinking about other things that a bustling, cultured medieval city like Keysaw would have, one of the main things that came to mind was a university. A quick Google search brought me up a ton of pictures of old, brownstone university complexes that I thought would make a great addition to Keysaw. I really liked the idea of a classic, brownstone aesthetic that would be super distinct from the rest of the city, but struggled at first with how to get that color in Minecraft since there aren't really any stone blocks like that. I tried a mix of granite first, but thought it was way too pink and busy, and instead went with a mix of different stripped woods and spruce planks, which was almost exactly the color I was going for. For the roof of the buildings, I went with blackstone aesthetic to match the serious tone of the university, and designed the buildings so that there would be round outcrops extending out, which make for some cool, complex roof designs. Like real medieval universities, I tried to include tall, elegant windows that accentuate the height of the building, and hard lines running all around the buildings to tie everything together as if it's one large, continuous structure. The result of all this is a university layout that looks really organic, and I made sure to include courtyards with manicured lawns in the center, with paths to walk around and benches to sit on, and a few leafy oak trees for shade just like reality. Right outside the university, I added a few merchant stalls selling books to students, and added some other objects around. But with the university complete, it's a good time to check on how the whole city is looking. The lower city is starting to sprawl outwards, and I love how different sections of the city have distinct features that set them apart from each other when seen from afar. To go in combination with the university, I started building a row of tall, brightly colored townhouses that would be dorms for students and living quarters for some of the faculty and staff. These would be within easy walking distance of the university and would have a great view looking down on it and out over the bay. At some point while building these townhouses, I passed the 60 hour mark, so we're about two thirds done with this section of the build. I go along and add supporting walls to the path, which ends up being pretty wide, so I build a few trees, covered sitting areas, another well, a few more merchant stalls, a ton of flowers and plants, and give each townhouse a covered entrance. There was still a lot of room on the cliffside, and I wanted to keep with the university district theme. I thought it'd be really cool if there was some kind of incredibly old library that was here way before the university, and at some point the university was founded here because of this ancient library and absorbed the library into itself. So I made these two huge towers that are way bigger than any other building in Keysaw so far, and gave them complicated dome roofs and wooden support arches going up the towers. 
At the base of the towers, I added some small brownstone buildings to show how the university was built onto the library, but the library still dwarfs the buildings at its base. The tower on the right is a little smaller than the one on the left, so I copy and paste the roof onto it, but then have to slope it down to match the smaller size of this tower. Since the towers are so large, I keep the majority of the walls stone, not only to support its own weight, but also because there would probably be bookshelves on the inside that would cover up any windows anyways. From this angle, you can see just how tall the towers are compared to everything else, and the only other structure in the city so far that can rival its size is the aqueduct. On the other side of the city, there will eventually be a building to match their size, but it's still a few minutes away. To get up to the library and the dorms, there's a stairway heading down that winds through a few oak trees and opens up around the side of the university. With the university and the cliffs above it completed, the right side of Keysaw is basically done. To close it in, I took the circular gate tower from the top of the bell cliffs and pasted it twice, once down by the water and a second time up against the mountain. To enter Keysalt, I create a gate decorated with prismarine, and then make a square, strong-looking tower to serve as a corner of the wall. I move everything so that it lines up together correctly, connect the gate to the towers, and add decorative wall patterns to match the gate. In front of all this, I take the seahorse statue from earlier and place them on either side of the gate to add to the sense of grandeur. Over to the right, I connect the lower and upper towers with a long wall. There's a ton of open space behind the gate, so I fill it in with a fish statue, a few fountains, and market stalls for merchants selling their goods to people just entering the city. It's a bit hard to see from above, but next to the wall there's allium and lavender to make a hillside covered in purple flowers with a retaining wall at its base. Surrounding everything is a swirling floor design. There's a central head, and coming away from it are eight tentacles. I thought this would be a depiction of some kind of sea god or deity that the people of Kisal worship. With that side of Kisal done, we're moving over to the left of the town square. Kisal is a naval power, surrounded by mountains and cliffs, and with its only access to the outside world through its bay. The city would need ships, and to make them it would need a shipyard. I start by making two long piers that stick out into the water, with a wooden base lower between them that starts to gradually slope down into the water. Ships would be made in the upper shipyard, and then when they're completed, they'd be pushed down the ramp and launched into the water. To help assemble the ships, there'd be cranes above to lower the long planks and beams down into position. With the boat and the cranes done, I fill in the shipyard piers with piles of wood, planks, and a covered structure where the beams could be cut into the correct shape, and also a main building at the very end that'd be where all the business and planning of the shipyard was done. Behind the shipyard, there's three rows of crammed, low houses. The walls of the houses are different colors, but to make this section seem like it all runs together, I keep the roofs the same color. This would be another section of townhomes and shops right off the town square, but not quite as nice. This would be where the dock workers, sailors, and regular citizens of Keysaw that work in the lower city would live. 75 hours into building Keysaw, and the main city is so close to being done, and there's only one cliffside still to build on. There's a central square, a university, and plenty of buildings for homes and shops. Another super important thing that Keysaw would need is a military and naval institute, where soldiers, guards, and officers could be trained, and the army and navy commanders could have their offices. The hillside in front of the cliff is big enough to build on, but it's a pretty strange shape and it ends almost directly next to the townhouses in front of it. To separate it from them, and to make it easier to build on, I know I'm going to have to raise where the first buildings are. To get up there, there needs to be a tall staircase, and along it can be buildings belonging to the military complex. I go along the hillside and carve the stairs going up and lay the foundations for where each building will be. I outline all the roofs first with pink, and then add decorations to them. I transformed pink wool into a mix of granite and a few other pinkish blocks like bricks and terracotta, and made all of the buildings in the complex pretty similar to each other. The area was initially inspired by Solitude in Skyrim, where there's this military training area up on the hillside in the city. So after detailing the buildings with all the doors and windows and transforming the ground from stone bricks to a mix of cobblestone and dead coral blocks, I go back through and add three different training areas for sparring and archery. At the very top of the cliff, I started working on a towering citadel to rival the height of the library on the opposite side of Keysaw. The central building is four circular rings on top of each other, and on the outer corners there are four smaller towers branching out from the bottom. The citadel is made entirely of stone, with spires rising out from each of the four smaller towers and a large one sticking out from the central building. On the sides of the main tower, there are outcrops sticking out and going up to the third ring, and at the very top, there are four more towers attached to the top ring. All in all, the citadel has nine spires rising from it, and a complicated but orderly mass of windows and huge doors leading out from it. I really love this building, especially when seen from afar. It looks like a tall fantasy castle, but still blends in well with the military complex running down the hillside, giving the appearance as if it's one huge, sprawling building. Right at the foot of the citadel is a final building opening up around a courtyard. I thought one final statue in the city would be appropriate and symbolize the importance of the military complex, and wanted to have some blend of military and sea theme. Naturally, this ended up being a trident. Originally, I was going to put it in front of the citadel, but I wanted there to be a clear view of the tower, so I moved the statue from there to right inside the courtyard where I was going to put another sparring ring. 
On a side note, I'm pretty pleased with the three statues I made in the city, and don't think there are a ton of statue schematics like these out there. So let me know if you want me to upload these on the run for download, and I can make a schematic pack for Planet Minecraft. With the upper area done, the only thing left to do in the city was have another gate closing in the main city of Kisal, and creating some final military buildings behind it to fill in the space. So that's basically everything from the first section of Kisal. In the next video, I'll work on the docks, ships, and everything else outside the center of the city. It shouldn't be 90 hours of building, so it should take much less time to make that next video. The rest of this video will be sim max taken throughout the city with some close up shots that are missed in the building time lapse. If you've enjoyed this video, leave it a like and feel free to subscribe. I've got a bunch of other city and castle videos, as well as other world painter time lapses and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and that you like Keysaw, and I'll see you next time. Peace.